Hey everyone, Michael Bodner here with another Tesla Tunity, and today we're going to be going through the installation of the Model 3 automatic power lift gate from Tesla Offer. Many of you probably recently saw this from Ben Sullen's Tesla Nomics. He had this installed in his wife's car, and of course, first from the YouTubers was Tesla Raj a couple months ago installing this on his own in his own car. Really impressive stuff. Uh, well, today we're going to do something a little different. Um, those videos are awesome and I, uh, I really appreciate both of them. I'd like to give you a different entry into this product and that is a full step-by-step -step installation guide. So we're gonna go from the first step all the way through to the trunk opening on its own. Come with me, we'll take you through every step of the way. And before we jump into it, I have a few people I really wanna extend a special thank you to. First and foremost, my dad. He spent two days with me over seven hours and don't freak out at that. I'm gonna help you do this installation in two to three hours at most. Um, but this was a frustrating two days and seven hours. Thank you, Dad. He even let me borrow his Model S overnight when, when we didn't get done on day one. Uh, next up is Tesla Raj. We spent a lot of time on Twitter DMs talking back and forth about the installation, some of the quirks, some of the, uh, the things you'll hear in this video. So it'll already be solved when you watch the video. And then last but certainly not least, Nate McComb. You all know him as Purple Model 3. Uh, he kind of helped me when I was in a jam. We were kind of possibly making a wrong turn and, and that's really what added a lot of time to the install. Uh, we were on the phone back and forth during the install and he was instrumental in, in helping me. So again, this video is gonna help you do the install and what I hope is two to three hours instead of the seven and the frustration it took us. Uh, if you follow me on Twitter or Instagram or Facebook, you probably saw we took the frunk out. Don't take your frunk out, you don't need to. Uh, so that's it, come with me and let's check it out. As I go through and remove everything from the package to make sure we have all the parts we're gonna to need to install the power trunk, one important thing to note is that there are quite a few tools you'll need to successfully accomplish this job. I'll have them all listed in the description below and list them out as they become necessary. You will wanna make sure you have all of these before you start the job to make sure you can finish it as quickly and efficiently as possible. First, we're gonna start with removing the plastic cover door on the reverse side of the trunk. It's actually really easy. You don't need a pry tool at all. This will be your first step into taking apart your car. Don't be afraid of loud noises. There are a lot of clips that hold this plastic piece to the trunk. Um, they're all gonna make a pretty loud sound. And for the most part, it comes off pretty easily. All of the clips are around the edges. There's enough wiggle room to get your fingers in. You don't need a pry tool at all. Um, you might break a couple of the little tiny green clips. We broke one. The kit does come with extras, so you're covered just in case it happens. And then once you're done, go ahead and retrieve any of the green clips that remain behind in the trunk. It's a lot easier to reinstall that piece later if those green clips are inside the plastic piece versus the other way around. The four white, two on each side, go ahead and leave those in the trunk and we'll show you how to do this. Uh, going back in, working around those. They're really tight, they're really hard to get out, so it's a lot better of an idea to leave those in the trunk. Next up, we'll go ahead and remove the plastic trim piece at the bottom of the trunk. Uh, really easy, just kind of lift up and pull on one side, and then go around and pull from the other side and it'll come straight out. Uh, you just kind of wiggle it around the rubber weather stripping and you're all set. Next up, we need to remove the plastic trim at the top of the trunk. That's known as the trunk garnish. To remove it, it's just two clips in, uh, on either side, just above the light in the trunk. You're gonna use one of the pry tools, um, again, the tool set is in the description down below. Um, you just kind of pop the tab out a little bit and then you can actually stick your hand in and uh, just pull it right out. With the tab slightly out, it literally just comes right out. Uh, you could do it with the pry tool as well, although I have found it's easier to remove them by hand after you use the pry tool to kind of lift that top edge about halfway out. The trunk garnish should just drop down pretty easily from there. Now we're gonna pull away the carpeting on the right-hand side of the trunk, but don't pull too hard. The trunk light is attached um, and the wiring is not that long. You probably have enough reach to leave it uh, for the sake of the video and really just to give us as much room as possible. We went ahead and disconnected it using one of the small pry tools included in the kit that we picked up. Now comes the hard part. We've gotta run wires from inside the trunk through to the trunk lid and of course you don't want those wires to be visible. So we're gonna run them, basically fish them through this rubber tube that already exists for existing wiring in the trunk. 
But like I said, this is the hard part. So you're gonna need to use a wire fish, um, fish tape, uh, many names for it. Big thanks to Tesla Raj. This is the exact one that he referenced and it works perfectly. In addition to that, I highly recommend getting some wire pulling lubricant. Um, it's been said that you could use dish soap for this, but um, given how hard everyone says this is, we went for the real deal product. And uh, again, I've got a link in the description down below for both products for you. It makes this step much easier. As well, big thank you to Tesla Offer for listening to early feedback and making this easier. Uh, the wires are a lot easier to pass through now that the connectors are left off. And we're gonna show what that means in just a second. But step one, we're gonna run the wire fish. Um, we're gonna start at the tops. So you're gonna pry away the rubber tube a little bit and start fishing the green um, fish tape through down to the bottom. It, it's really helpful to have two hands here, uh, or I should say four hands, two sets of hands. Uh, my dad was a big help here. He's pushing down on the wire tape, as you can see. Um, and then I'm gonna pull it through at the bottom. Uh, you can break away the, uh, or remove the clips that are holding the rubber tubing if it will help make it easier for you. We didn't feel it was necessary. Uh, so we left everything intact and just kind of worked the fish tape through the tube. As we approached the bottom, we grabbed some needle nose pliers. So we found that was a little helpful because you have a really small window where you're trying to pull that green fish tape through. Now the fish tape itself is actually gonna come out on the underside of the trunk. You can't see that in this camera angle. I'm gonna show it to you in just a second. So you don't wanna get too much of it out um, down at the bottom opening of the rubber. You wanna kind of help pull it along toward you, toward basically the outer edge of the trunk. And then you're gonna be able to grab it from the inside and pull it through the opening. Uh, like I said, you're gonna see that in just a second. That should be in the video. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that did make the video. And let me go ahead and take you in and we'll take a closer look. So here's the underside of the trunk. You can see exactly where the fish tape came out. All right, now that you're done with the fish tape, it's time to put it to good use. We're going to tape two sets of wires to the fish tape. I used electrical tape and I made sure it was really snug. Um, one trick is to not bunch the wires up. Uh, you wanna space them out because the little metal pins on the end of these wires will make it a little bit thicker. So if you space those out, you won't have any bunching as you pull through. Now which wires are they? You'll see two bundles of wires wrapped in a black fabric. The first one has ends that are blue, green, white, and black with a purple wire off to the side and the other has ends that are yellow, red, and black. So again, tape those to the fish tape, and then we're gonna pull it the opposite direction back through um, with our fish tape up through the rubber tubing, and then we're gonna reach through and uh, bring it out into the middle open area of the trunk. When you're done, go ahead and undo the tape. I found that to be a little tedious and tricky, especially with the wire pulling lubricant on it. But uh, again, just be patient, take your time. You don't wanna break any pins. Um, you're gonna get through this pretty quickly. The, uh, the worst is behind you. Next, we're gonna connect those loose wires into their proper connector. First, we'll start with the blue, green, white, and black wire. Look for the Y adapter that came with your kit and you'll notice a matching set of colored wires. To make this easier, you can separate the open end of the clip from itself and then put the pinned wires through. You're gonna to wanna to match up the colors with the other end of the kit. So again, the blue, green, white, and black will match on each side. As you're doing this, you're gonna see the wires snap into place. So make sure the copper side is up so you can visually see it and you will notice that the wire will lock into place. You could pull slightly on the wire just to confirm that it is in fact locked into place. So working from right to left on the screen, you'll see the wires are again blue, green, white, and black. Once you're done, go ahead and reconnect that wire harness. Now we'll leave the purple wire off to the side for just another few minutes, and we'll work on reconnecting the yellow, red, and black wires. These are gonna connect to our trunk button. Now that we had a little bit more experience with the installation, we felt comfortable going right for it with the wire connection already made. So we're gonna start from the right to left and we are gonna go yellow, then red, then black, and the leftmost slot is open as there's only three pinned wires in this particular connection. 
Moving up to the trunk, next to the emergency release, you'll see a white connection. We're gonna go ahead and release that. Push carefully on the tab and pull it out. Connect that into our Y adapter, and then go ahead and reconnect the only open side. Now, let's go ahead and tap the purple wire. Grab one of the red and black positaps from the kit and unscrew the gray side. You're gonna look for the green wire that we're tapping here in the video. If your wire in this location is not green, please do reach out to Tesla Offer to make sure you are tapping the correct wire. Go ahead and put the gray end around the green wire and then take the red end and screw it into place. Make sure it's snug, but you certainly do not wanna break through the wire at the same time. Now, unscrew the red end. Feed the lone purple wire through the open end so just a little bit of wire is coming through with the copper exposed. Now, put that into the opening, and while pushing it snug, go ahead and screw that into place. You can see on our first attempt, it slipped back out. So it's okay if it takes a couple tries. Once everything's all set, just kind of tug on the wires just a little bit, just to make sure they're locked into place. Now it's time to replace our struts with the powered struts. We'll do a close up on the passenger side and then zoom out when we do the driver's side. So what you wanna do here is take either a flathead screwdriver or a pry tool, and you're just gonna pry up the metal retaining clip that holds the strut in place. There's one at the top and the bottom. Be really careful. If you use a metal tool and it happens to slip, you can scratch your trunk. With the clip up and out of the way a little bit, you can go ahead and give a light tap or pulling motion on the strut and remove it from the ball joint that it's on. It's really important to either put down a towel or put your hand in between the strut and the glass to make sure you don't chip the rear window glass. Once the strut is removed, you can go ahead and insert your new strut on the passenger side. It'll snap right into place with ease. Make sure the wired end is at the bottom. You can go ahead and leave the wire bundle sitting just by the taillight and we'll come back to it in just a moment. Again, on the driver's side, we're gonna repeat the process we found that suddenly the driver's side was a bit harder to get out. That was probably due to the tension of the different height caused by the passenger side. That's okay, we just grabbed a rubber mallet and lightly tapped on it, nothing too hard. And again, you can see my hand is protecting the glass. It's in between the strut and the glass, making sure nothing bad happens. We're gonna go ahead and install the new powered strut the same way on the driver's side, and we're all set. Now we're gonna remove the taillights because we're gonna run those strut wires behind them. To do it, our first step is to remove that black screw on top of the taillight. We found that it was too tight to get by hand, so we went ahead and put a towel on top and then used a wrench to loosen it before finishing it with our hands. Since this is a plastic part, we thought the towel would help avoid any damage to the plastic. Pull back the carpeting and you'll see there are two eight millimeter bolts that you have to remove to get the taillight out. Go ahead and use your ratchet wrench and loosen those bolts. I decided to do the rest of the way by hand, just in case, uh, just to make sure that I didn't drop those bolts somewhere in the trunk. Once those are cleared, you can go ahead and also remove the wiring harness that's tied in, providing power to the taillights. From there, it's time to remove the taillight itself. So you're just gonna wiggle it back and forth, left and right, and then pull out and up at the same time to make sure you clear that screw on the top that was holding in the black cap. Now it's time to run the wire for the driver's side strut. So you're gonna go ahead and feed the wire through that oval shaped hole that the wiring harness was in. This part's really important. Uh, to have the best fit possible, and you literally will not be able to tell if there's something behind the taillight, make sure the wire goes in on the lower portion of the oval. In fact, as a best practice, just in case any kind of moisture gets in behind and around the trunk area, leave this wire in a drip loop. Um, we briefly show it in the video, so I'm going to go ahead and, and freeze it here for a second so you can see exactly what a drip loop looks like. Uh, but basically, long story short, that'll make sure moisture doesn't travel down the power wire and get in and behind your taillight. As you're inserting the taillight back into the body of the car, if you kind of bring your head around to the left-hand side of the taillight, you'll see those two guide tabs that'll help you line everything up. Once you're in on the left, you can kind of shimmy it in on the right and you'll be all set. From there, go ahead and screw back in that black cap on the top. And then we wanna jump back into the car and we're gonna reverse the process now with those two eight millimeter bolts. I'm gonna put them on by hand 
and then finish them home again with the ratchet wrench to tighten them. Last but not least, go ahead and connect the taillight back in. You can go ahead and step on the brakes or put on the hazard lights just to test them just to make sure you've got a perfect fit on everything. One quick finishing step for the driver's side strut, go ahead and plug in the extension cord to the end of those wires. You'll see it has blue connectors on both ends and it'll be the only thing that you can connect into that wire. Over to the passenger side where it's the same exact steps we saw on the driver's side. So first, we're going to remove that black cap on top of the taillight. Again, the towel should protect the plastic pieces. Then we're going to go behind the taillight and we're going to remove the two 8mm bolts. Don't forget to disconnect the taillight. And then again, shimmy the taillight out and be careful of the paint. From there, we can go ahead and run the power wire for the passenger side strut through the oval hole. And again, remember to leave your drip loop before you go ahead and reinsert the taillight. Get those two tabs locked in on the right hand side and then shimmy it in over on the left. Screw back in the black plastic cap and then tighten your two 8mm bolts and you're all set. While we're still on the passenger side, we'll go ahead and connect the grounding wire. First, we're going to loosen the 10 millimeter bolt that we have displayed up here on the screen. And then we'll connect the ground wire. How do we know which one that is? It's a black wire with a hook on the end. We have it up here frozen on the screen and it's connected to the power wire. Now the power wire has a purple connector on the end. So this is the only combination of wires that look like this. Go ahead and slide the ground wire beneath the nut and then tighten that 10 millimeter bolt back down. Now it's time to run the power and the can wires all the way from the passenger side behind the taillight up to the driver's side footwell. To know you have the right wires, uh, we have them up here on the screen. The power wire is going to be a thicker black wire with kind of a metal connector on it. Uh, and then the can wires are going to be a thinner red and black wire. They're going to have two white tags on it that are both going to say the word can on it. I chose not to, but if you'd like to install the trunk closing button down in the driver's side footwell, you'll also run that wire with this bundle. Now to keep it a clean install, and I'm not sure that this is 100% necessary, but I, again, I like a clean install. We're gonna run it below the carpeting in the trunk. You'll find a few more of those black push tabs that we saw on the trim at the top of the trunk. So just use your pry tool, remove those, and then you could push the wires down behind it and uh, keep running them over to the left hand side. Here's a good spot to point out a helpful tip. Make sure you have enough slack in the power wire and the can wire back in your passenger side behind the taillight. If you don't leave yourself enough room, you will have a difficult time with placement of the control unit in the end. While we're making our way over to the left, it's a good idea to go back to the right with our power strut from the driver's side because uh, that's going to all connect again behind the passenger side taillight. You can see while I wrapped up with those wires, my dad started running the can and the power wire up around and behind the carpeting. That way the wires are completely hidden. They're eventually going to make their way, of course, to the driver's side footwell. So we put down the rear passenger seat on the driver's side and uh, we ran the wires over there. To grab the wires, we need to remove the leather seat extension off behind the seat belt area. This is really simple. Lift up from the bottom and pull out from the top. Now you can grab your wire bundle and make sure it goes in between the seat belt and the door. You'll have to forgive my back on this one, but we're looking to get the wire to the point where it's at the bottom behind the seat belt in between the seat cushion and the plastic trim. Now finally, let's put that leather extension right back in. You'll notice there's a plastic hook down toward the bottom. Look for the groove that that's going to go into, and it's going to make it a lot easier to put back in than I made it look in this video. Line that up, and then pop it into place at the top. Now you can put your seat cushion back up, and we'll go ahead and keep moving the wires forward. I went ahead and moved the driver's seat all the way forward, and then you can see I neatly tucked the wire beneath the plastic trim. Of course, for the sake of the video, I'm in the front seat, but obviously you could do this from the rear seat. Put the driver's seat all the way back, and now you get down to the fun part in the driver footwell. Now we're going to remove three trim pieces. First, we're going to take our plastic pry tool and remove the trim piece to the left of where your wood 
or white trim is if you haven't already wrapped that. Once that piece is out, you'll see a really easy to remove uh, piece just to the left. And then finally the running board, uh, the camera angle didn't allow us to get a good shot of it, but there's one black tab at the top that you'll have to use one of your pry tools to pop out. And then you'll remove it by lifting up toward the back and then pulling up and out. To connect power, we need to remove the access panel under the steering wheel. There's a clip to the left, a T20 Torx in the middle, and then another clip to the right. Now, while you're watching me remove the access panel, I'll mention that unfortunately, we were not able to use this access point to connect to power. There's a thick red wire behind a bolt that they'd like you to connect with. Unfortunately, I just could not get my hands in there. I've got a picture of it up on the screen in case you wanna give it a go. Um, there's a wire harness in the way. I I couldn't even take the picture, it's right from the instruction manual. Don't worry, we did find an alternate source that is much easier to reach. In the first wire harness in from the door, you'll find a really thick blue wire. Now be careful. There's a blue and white twisted pair. We don't want that blue wire. There is a thick blue wire by itself. It's kind of hidden in the back, so you gotta wiggle the wires carefully around and look for that thick blue wire. Put a positive tap on it as you can see up on the screen, and then we'll show you how to connect power to it. All right, since we're not gonna be connecting under the screw with the power wire, instead, we're gonna be using a Positap. So we're gonna to have to modify the connection just a bit. And this is really pretty, pretty simple. We're gonna cut off the U-hook from the power wire uh, that you can see up here on the screen, and then we're gonna strip away some bare copper. We're gonna use a Positap just like we've done in the trunk, and it's really straightforward. Now, one important note while you see me working on this, the power source that we've selected is a switched power source. It is not a constant power source. Basically, that means anytime the car is on, it's on. Anytime sentry mode is on, it's on. If you park your car at home and you don't use sentry mode, the trunk kit will go to sleep and it might take a little while, a few seconds before it wakes back up. All right, now just like we did in the trunk, we're going to feed the exposed wire through the screw on the Positap and then hold it snug and screw it into place. Once we're done, give it a little pull just to make sure it's secure and it looks like we're good. Now we're going to plug in the power wire that we ran from the trunk into the white receiving connector coming from the inline fuse. For the CAN wires, we won't have a good camera angle to show us doing the actual connections. So just for placement, I want to show you that it's the last wire harness all the way in the back. Again, using Positaps, we're going to connect the CAN H wire to the light blue connection in the middle and the CAN L to the purple connection in the middle on the far left toward us in this wire harness. Now let's go ahead and close back up the area where we made all of the connections. First, we're going to put that lower running board piece in. And I do apologize, my back's in the way. We really couldn't get a good camera angle on this. But you're going to kind of want to slide it in uh, forward section first. Make sure it lines up. Remember, there is a clip you have to push back in. Uh, once that's lined up, you can kind of bring down the back and uh, clip it into the logical places. Just be mindful, obviously make sure there are no wires in the way of any of the clip locations and that everything's tucked in neatly. From there, you can put the small black piece back in place. Again, it just kind of snaps in and make sure it's lined up properly with the weather stripping around it. And then finally, the decorative cap on the end of the dash. Moving back to the trunk, we're gonna remove the latch that comes with the car. The new kit does include a soft close mechanism, so that requires a different latch. To remove our latch, we need to remove the two Torx T45 screws. They're really simple to remove. Of course, uh, you should have the Torx included in the kit that I recommend. Once that's out, you can go ahead and install the new soft close mechanism. It'll be really easy to tell which direction it goes. The power wire is gonna move toward the passenger side of the car. So line it up and then put in the two Torx T45 screws right back tighten everything down. This could take some adjustments to get everything right. You might find yourself tinkering a little bit, loosening and retightening. So um, do plan for that as necessary. 
Now again, we will want to hide this wire off to the right, so you see me removing the clips again. A smart money would have been to not put the clips back until I was done tucking away all of the wires. Now take the soft close motor and you can kind of just tuck it over behind the carpet on the right temporarily. We'll come back and we'll, uh, we'll tighten that up in just a second. All right, now it's time to plug everything in and see if it works. So one thing the instructions actually show on the parts list but never mention what to do with is the buzzer. So this is the part that's going to make noise when the trunk is opening and closing. Uh, it's, a, it's got a tiny red connector on the end, so there's only one place it could possibly go. You'll find that really easily. And then from there, we can actually plug in all of the connectors into the control unit. Again, a really well-designed system because there's only one place that everything can go. Uh, the only things that are duplicated are the two struts, and it doesn't matter which side you plug them into. So go ahead and plug in all of your connections, and then wait to see if that light flashes. All right, so a good step, good sign. The uh, trunk button here is lit up, so let's give it a go. Power trunk. <laughs> okay, now that the trunk works, let's go ahead and drill a permanent location for that button. Do your best to center it in the location of your choice. This is going to be visible um, so again, you know, after all this great work, we want to make sure that button looks perfect. Uh, the kit does come with a drill bit. You will, of course, need to have a drill. I do advise you don't put your fingers as close to it as my dad did, but no, he did not drill through his hand. <laughs> Take it nice and slow. Uh, you don't want to chew through any of the plastic. We ended up with, as you can see, a perfect circle and it is perfectly spaced. So uh, it's right where we wanted it and it is... Um, spot on. We'll go ahead and feed the button through. There is a lock nut on the back, so make sure you take that off first. Once it's through, then you can go ahead and feed the lock nut back over the wires and lock the button into place. And there you can see it from the overhead shot. With the lock nut, the button is firmly in place and it will not slide at all. Now, remember those green clips that stayed in the car? Uh, that we pried out before we continued on. Let's go ahead and put those back into the uh, trunk cover. So they just kind of slide and snap into place. Make sure you put them in the right place. Remember there are the two white clips on each side that we left in the trunk. Leave those spots open on your cover plate. As you can see, I almost put a green clip in the wrong place. To close back up the trunk lid, Let's go ahead and reconnect the trunk button, and then it's time to put the cover back on. I personally have found the easiest way to do this is to slide the black cover over each of those white clips first. Now, tackle the innermost toward the center of the trunk lid first. Those are easier to reach. Then you can kind of pry back with your fingers the outermost edges of the front side of the trunk lid you'll be able to see over it and kind of watch where that clip will slide properly into place. Once you have the white clips in place, it's really easy from there. Just kind of bang up on the plastic cover where each of those green clips are and you'll hear it snap into place. Don't forget the one in the middle. Tesla Offer recommends taking the packing material and basically ripping it out of the package and wrapping it around the soft close motor. You're gonna drop this down into the lower area of the uh, well down and behind the tail light, and you don't wanna have any rattling, so this is gonna help prevent that. Now remember when I mentioned leaving enough slack in the power and can wires? Well, we failed to do that. So we actually came up short and couldn't double-sided tape mount the control unit where we wanted to. So for our installation, we actually went ahead and wrapped the control unit in foam as well. And we're gonna bundle these uh, two items so close to each other that there's really nowhere it can move to anyway. If you look behind the carpet and down, you'll see the control unit and the soft close motor. We used double side stick tape for the buzzer and mounted it to the car. And don't forget while you're in here to reconnect that light for the trunk. Otherwise it'll be pretty dark in there. Now it's time to put on the lower plastic trim a couple of pointers here. One, 
definitely remove the cover for the lower trunk well. We didn't. It caused this plastic trim to stick up a little bit. That caused the trunk to bump and not close all the way. In addition, you'll notice that the plastic in the front, and you can't really see it in the video, it has to kind of go down and under the, the soft close latch. So again, make sure you get that in all the way. And then once you're set, you can go ahead and put the rubber weather stripping back around the plastic piece. And then finally, it's time to put the upper garnish back into place. Uh, you'll see a number of grooves that it will line up properly in. And then don't forget, there are those two black clips on either side. Uh, similarly, this piece also requires the assistance of the rubber weather stripping to kind of hold it in place. So once you're done, just kind of peel that weather stripping down around the plastic garnish. All right, so there you have it. That's the automatic power lift gate for the Tesla Model 3 from Tesla Offer. If this is something you're looking to pick up, you can actually do so direct from Tesla Offer and use my code TeslaTunity at checkout. That'll get you 5% off of your purchase. Um, and, and I can really vouch for the customer service and the support from Tesla Offer as well. They uh, do all their customer service through WhatsApp and it's actually really easy. And uh, they were readily available direct from Hong Kong. So I really appreciate that. Um, but that's all I have for you. If you like this video and you want to help my channel grow, please click the subscribe button, click the like, and if you have any questions, comments, concerns, likes, dislikes, leave me a comment. I love them. I'll, I'll check them out and I'll get right back to you. So that's all we had for you on this one, everyone. We'll catch you on the next one. Bye.